The absurd. The obsessed. The obscure. Follow us if you dare as we open the files at My Weird Space. There's a slippery slide for restaurant meals. A bar where on the rocks takes a whole new meaning. And young ladies to whom fear is not an option. Thousands of people came together recently to witness Thailand's famous annual water buffalo races. Over a hundred buffaloes took part in the day-long racing bonanza, competing in three categories, small, medium and large. Hmm, that sounds original. As the jockeys spurn both saddles and style, they concentrate on two things only, not to fall off and to win. Look out, what's going on? Why did he jump off? Oh, I see. He didn't have a say in it. What a lovely water buffalo you are. I just hope you can run fast. And they're off and away. Heck, look at the horns on that one. Yes, sir, I'd sit as far back and away from those beauties if I were you too. This year saw the completion of a proper track with benches on either side for the crowd and starting gates for the beasts themselves. This prevents injuries, which apparently used to occur frequently when the event was simply held in a field and buffaloes ran amok amongst the onlookers, I bet. Halloween can get a little fishy at the Sea Paradise Aquarium in Yokohama, Japan, where about 1,000 tiny glimmering fish seem to magically transform themselves into a trick-or-treating pumpkin. Yes, I know a lot of imagination is required. The fish are small yellow striped butterfish, a treat for both the dolphins who share their tank and the Japanese visitors who watch their little routine. While the eyes and the mouth of the pumpkin are actually made of paper taped to the surface of the tank, the fish themselves are directed to the area by a frogman offering food. Despite the simple setup, the illusion was complete and most of the audience said they were mesmerised by the show. Hmm, I don't know about mesmerised. OK, I guess you could say it looks a bit scary if you, uh, you know, stand in the exact right position and squint your eyes in just the right way and throw in some helpful lighting. Now, the producer has called this story Heavy Pets, but I don't know, these cuties look a healthy weight to me. Even this fella looks a tad more than cuddly. Yes, look here, I'm quite sure of it. The producer has made a little mistake, but I won't be the one to tell her. She scares me. Well, even pets should be able to enjoy a little treat now and then. And look at this lovely cat. She's not necessarily fat. She could just be waiting for the pitter-patter of little paws. Goodness, what's this? The producer is right after all. I hate that. Computer game fans from all over Europe descended on Frankfurt recently for the chance to try out the soon-to-be-released, long-awaited game, Crisis. It's a first-person 3D shooter. Ah, just what we need. More violence in the world. Players have the impression of being in the thick of the action as they try to battle it out with invading alien forces. Ah, and that is different to other games? How? The game revolves around a United States Special Forces team. Well, of course, because no other country in the world could possibly have one of those. That's tasked with rescuing a group of archaeologists who have discovered a mysterious alien artefact in the South China Sea. Ooh. 
violence, violence and more violence. Lovely. When they're finished, these kids will need to go home to their mums for some hot soup and a big cuddle. Is the idea coming across that I'm not a fan of computer games? Sorry. Instead of buying clothes or second-hand items, internet shoppers in Italy can now browse for real-life people willing to sell their services to the highest bidder. Shoppers of the website Catahomo can view adverts showing people's services for sale. A glossy advertising campaign promising solutions in flesh and bone has now been launched to promote the site. The painter, the musician, the grandmother who tells stories, the engineer, they're all available from the website. Those advertising their services come with a barcode, a brief description of the services they offer and of course the price. Catahomo even advertises the services of a professional icebreaker, willing to facilitate most social encounters, specialising in work parties and first dinners with parents-in-law. Huh? Professional or not, I bet I know some particular parents-in-law who would have her running for cover. As the players of this soccer team meet before a match, their coach reviews strategy and the players put on their game faces. It's a scene repeated by soccer teams throughout the world. But for this team, it's a little different. It's not the coach or even the captains who make strategic decisions. It's the team's fans. The internet company web to sport led an ownership group to incredibly buy their own team. Now the owners come fans use the team's website to firstly vote on the starting lineup and then to give pivotal instructions to the coach. I bet he just loves that. After a match, the fans drag players they think should play next week in their preferred positions using a pitch diagram at the website. After the deadline passes, the information is collated and the players who get the most votes are given the thumbs up for the next match. Computer or no computer, the old yelling as loud as you can at your team usually has the desired effect. Feeling hungry? Take a seat. Check out this amazing new German restaurant where the waiters are very few and far between. Just select your choice to the chef and wait. Soon you'll be rewarded by an act reminiscent of manna from heaven. OK, the chef has your request and it's on its way via something that could probably be described as a cross between a vertical sushi belt and a robo banquet slippery slide. Could you pick up the pace a little please? We're starving. With the table sitting ten or so people, the only thing we're a little concerned about is how would you tell whose meal was whose? Mine would be easy to identify. It would clearly be the biggest. Ooh, now this story looks to be right up my alley, even more than the food story previous. And that, believe me, is saying something. What red-blooded male doesn't love a little spy-related intrigue? It makes me think of James Bond and Maxwell Smart. OK, you're probably right. Those two examples shouldn't be used in the same sentence, but I can't help it. I'm so excited, I can hardly contain myself. And of course, every good spy needs a convincing disguise. I knew it! These lucky apprentice spies are heading into the famous Kandar City. I'm so jealous. Every spy buff worth his fake ID knows that's the place to be. Oh, 
there's nothing quite like cracking a good safe, not to mention cracking a good code. Ah, invisible ink, white light, it's all too much. Well done, lads. Now be careful for booby traps. Remember the tips in spy activities for dummies. Now's the time they could come in handy. Now something for the what the heck is going on here file. Washington tourists and late morning commuters were treated to an unusual spectacle in front of the White House when they chanced upon a performer who appeared to be levitating in mid-air. Look, he's about to open his eyes. Creepy, huh? Ah, oh, thankfully a busload of Japanese tourists. Everyone knows they're both rich and an easy touch. The magician, who goes by the stage name of Ramana, says he trained in India at the Academy of Magical Sciences. I think that's supposed to sound impressive. Thank you, sir. I was hoping someone would be brave enough to do that. Though it doesn't seem to have had any effect. That truly is amazing. It's obviously time for desperate measures. I suggest stealing his collection box. Does this painting seem familiar to you? Can you perhaps recognise the style or, if you're very smart indeed, even name the artist? Well, here, meet the artist. She's cute, she's talented and she's four years old. Little Carly loves to paint and incredibly has pieces of her work currently hanging at the Manchester Art Gallery in England. Ah, oh dear, alas, she's not a genius after all. Just a normal kid who makes mess and luckily there's always mum to clean it up. Do you have one of those kids who is so picky with their food that even after starving them for a day will still only eat their baked beans one at a time and even then grudgingly? Well, don't succumb to their guerrilla tactics as this harassed mum has. Her answer is to make a mountain of jam sandwiches. It's the only thing that will apparently appease her mischievous, albeit nutrient deficient, spoiled little boy. I wonder if she's ever considered a wee smack on the bottom. Sorry, just a suggestion. Singers and musicians from the Democratic Republic of Congo held an incredible end-of-show performance at Brussels' prestigious Contemporary Arts Museum. They'd been taking part in the huge Congolese arts festival, Yambi, which means welcome in Swahili. The festival was considered extremely important for the Congolese entertainers due to the not always favourable history that connects the Democratic Republic of Congo, formerly known as the Belgian Congo, to that of Belgium. The musicians, who all come from different parts of the country, speak different dialects and are constantly making a linguistic effort in order to learn the languages of each other even if it is just for a particular song. Yes, I agree, it would be a lot easier to forget the singing and just dance. Not to mention it looks like lots of fun. Here we have a team of scientific explorers who are about to set off on an epic journey to the North Pole to conduct what they claim will be the first accurate measurements of the polar ice cap. Brrr, sends me running for the thermal undies just thinking about it. The two-man, one-woman mission will see them trekking more than 2,000 kilometres and hopes to collect data that will help scientists understand the effects of global warming. 
The woman member will be taking care of logistics and navigation. What? Well, I can see how that would give the job of logistics to a woman, but navigation? You can't say that I didn't warn them. Ah, dry land at last. No, nope, not yet. Phew, how about here? No, nope, blast. Actually, I don't think that's a member of the team. That's one of those big elephant seals with a very severe case of sunburn. See, told you. Off you go, mate. You never know when some Inuit hunters could come by and trust us, you don't want to be on their menu. Something tells me this is one new bar that the guys from the previous story would probably want to give a miss. Welcome to the Absolute Ice Bar, Asia's first all-ice bar that is set to provide sub-zero pleasures to the affluent of Tokyo. Yes, the patrons all look very excited to enter. Mind you, they'll probably be just as excited to get out of there when the minus five degrees Celsius temperature seeps into their bones. And what do you think the glasses are made of? Ice, of course. Guess we can't call them glasses then, can we? Suppose they'd have to be referred to as ices. With 50 centimetres of ice covering nearly every surface of the drinking establishment, it's not surprising that the management warned customers not to stay more than 30 minutes. Goodness, that's a first. A hotel that actually wants their patrons to leave. Look closely. See if you can tell what this strange looking creation is. That's if you can see it at all. It's a peculiar looking mirrored cubicle that's had passers by guessing for days. Believe it or not, it's London's first ever one way mirrored glass loo that allows the user to see out without letting sticky nosed passers by peep in. Hey, you, sticky nosed passers by, nick off and take your dog with you. Some may think that the toilet is a practical joke, but in reality, it's a contemporary work of art. Or so says its Italian designer. Regardless of how you see it, the toilet has quickly become a word of mouth must see for the London locals. I guess the bottom line, no pun intended, is how desperate would you have to be before you use it? Here we are at the Tokyo Motor Show, where every wacky and weird vehicle imaginable is craving attention. But where are the real cars? You know, the type a true man can sink his teeth into. Oh, baby, now that's what I'm talking about. Come to daddy. There were cars there that were eco-friendly, cute, futuristic, robotic, hybrid, electric, and of course, downright crazy. Speaking of crazy, this one actually gives birth. What next? No, don't answer that question. I don't know if I can handle the answer. A tiny car coming out of a small car seems a bit silly to me, but I do admit, this one is kind of cute. I'm thinking of buying this one for my mother-in-law. It has a jelly-like bodywork that even she couldn't dent. Uh, what am I saying? Of course she could. Five boys between the age of 9 and 14 competed in a Lego build-off in California recently. The contestants were given two hours and five identical stacks of Lego sets to build their vision of what a town centre would look like in the year 2055. Oh, I 
okay now, just have to remember what Mum told me. Firstly, that I'm wonderful and extremely clever. Well, I already knew that. And secondly, to keep calm, organised and focused. Oh, that's enough now, Mum. Get out of my head. I'm losing my concentration. I hope this boy doesn't have to go looking for just that special tiny piece, or he may come to regret that throw everything everywhere attitude of his. Finally, it's the winning creation. I wonder just how much Lego one could buy with the 5,000 US dollar prize. It's becoming very expensive to die in the Philippines. And even though cremations could save on the cost of coffins, many families still prefer to bury their dead in the cemetery with the best quality coffin they can afford. Enter a sleepy town 40 kilometers out of Manila that the locals happily call Coffin City. No, not Gotham City, Coffin City. It could be any other village in the Philippines countryside, with rows of houses basking under the sun. That is, until you see the coffins laying along the roadsides, many unfinished and in rough wood, but some polished, painted and shining. The locals aren't quite sure why the town took to coffin making, but they certainly aren't complaining about the positive turn of events. Business is booming and they are grateful. Filipinos honour their dead on All Souls Day, with some camping overnight at the cemetery, holding picnics and prayer vigils. We here at My Weird Space find that an extremely respectful practice, but one we won't be honouring simply because we'd be way too scared. I don't know why, but for some reason I have a strange sensation coming over me. Ah, oh, yes, that's it. Fear! Roller Derby is undergoing a revival in the USA. As a grassroots contact sport with a strong feminist edge, and with names like Condoleezza Slice and Camilla the Hun, the women are enjoying a take-no-prisoners attitude. Bruising and blood noses are the norm here, where team members gladly leave their soft sides at the door as they enter. These ladies actually look as if they've forgotten to take their medication. Hey you, move over. These girls look quite lovely. It must be just when they take to the rink that they turn into warriors. These two look as if they should be partaking, not spectating. And this man is probably only barracking for his wife because she told him to. Hmm, if that's the case, I don't blame him. Yes, it's a fast and sometimes violent game, but amazingly, the two teams usually go out for a drink together afterward and even claim to be friends. Women. That's all we have this time, but follow us again if you dare when we open the files at My Weird Space. <laughs>